number one. My parents were on their honeymoon to Key West. When they arrived at the hotel to check in, they were told that the room would be non-smoking. With my dad being a smoker, they requested a different room. They got the room switch and went to their room. As they got off the elevator, the smell of fresh paint was overwhelming. Down the hall, there was a painter with all necessary supplies laid out around him and was painting the wall. As my parents walked past him, they casually greeted him and the painter had absolutely no acknowledgement of their presence. Whatever. When they got to their room, the smell of paint was even worse in there, so bad it wasn't even bearable, so they decided to go to the front desk to change rooms. When they explained the situation, the attendant looked very confused and informed them that there wasn't a scheduled paint job on that floor for that day, but agreed to change their room. My parents go back to their floor to grab their luggage, and the painter is completely gone. All supplies cleaned up and gone within 10 minutes, and the smell of paint was completely gone as well. At this point, my parents were freaked out, but didn't think much of it, and go to their new room. The next morning, on their way to breakfast, they overhear a tour guide talking to a group. My parents tuned in when the guide mentioned the floor that they were originally supposed to stay on. Apparently, a long time ago, there was a painter on that floor, painting and fell down the elevator shaft to his death. Now, my parents don't normally believe in the paranormal, but after an event like this, that they had no explanation for, it freaked them out quite a bit. Number two, one night, when I was maybe 10 or 12, I had trouble falling asleep. My bedroom was the entire top floor of our house, with my bed and such being on the left side, and the storage closets in the play area being on the right. I was lying in bed when I heard a noise from the other side of the room and see a rocking horse begin to rock. It was sitting just outside of the storage closet doors. It proceeded to rock its way halfway across the room and stopped dead under the ceiling light. At this point, I was freaking out and just buried my head under the blankets and never peeked out again until morning. Number three. Before I was born, my father and mother had a small apartment together. My mother told me once she went in the basement and saw a woman standing at the base of the steps, just staring up at her, and then she just vanished. Then, my father was in a shower, one with a sliding glass door that you can barely make out what's on the other side, when a large figure walked up to the other side of the glass and banged on it, making it blow out. My mother found him in the fetal position in the shower, covered in glass, and no one was around. That last one made them move out. He confirmed it happened, but doesn't like to talk about it. He's a relatively tough dude, so for something to scare him that much means a lot. Somewhere in between those two occurrences, they came home to find absolutely everything moved over about an inch. They realized this, because they're not very good at dusting. Number 4 My nephew lives with me in an old farmhouse built in the 1890s. When he was about 4, maybe 5, he told me that there was a little boy named Charlie who lived in our house. He said Charlie had never heard of video games and that Charlie's dad left him home all by himself. This was around the same time that he had an imaginary friend called Mr. Cat, who was an anthropomorphic cat, so I wrote it off. A couple of weeks later, I was shaving with the bedroom door open, and I thought I could see my nephew kind of looking in at me out of the corner of my eye. 
I stuck my head around and could see him from behind, messing with an old china cabinet we kept important stuff in, and just as I walked into the room, I could see my nephew sitting in the living room, watching TV. He couldn't have crossed that much distance that fast or silently. I asked him about it, and he said, Oh yeah, that was Charlie. He says there's a book in there from when you were a little boy. And at the bottom of a stack of old documents and stuff in the china cabinet is a book I got as a gift when I was a kid. I didn't even know it was there. It was under two boxes of documents and couldn't have been seen until the boxes were lifted out. The little boy didn't look like you think of ghosts. He wasn't transparent. He didn't float. He didn't look spooky. He just looked like a kid. Now I'm convinced that people see ghosts, or whatever they are, every day, and don't realize it, because they just look as real as we do. Number 5 My now ex-wife and I had just gotten married and moved into a new neighborhood. We moved in in the winter. As spring came, we noticed there were multiple dead animals. Birds, squirrels, raccoons in the yard. We cleaned them all up and started to do improvements to the outside of the house and painting on the inside. I started to notice strange things going on. Keys were not where I left them. Stuff like that. Small. I thought I was just being forgetful. Then, things slowly started to escalate. While in bed, I could swear I could hear a barely audible conversation like a radio in a far room. As soon as I would try to focus on it, it would go away. I started to hear footsteps at the other end of the house. One night, while laying in bed, I hear a huge crash that woke me up out of dead sleep. I went into the kitchen and saw my kid's hamster cage on the floor about 15 feet from where it was. We would put it on the fridge at night because we had a cat and didn't want it getting to it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Cat knocked it off. But this cage had to fly over a breakfast bar and a kitchen table to get to its resting place. Then, things got ugly. I would be sitting at home watching TV and I would have this uncontrollable thought. What would it be like to be possessed? Or, I want to be possessed. I couldn't get this thought out of my head. I couldn't concentrate on anything but that. I would literally have to say in my head, I love God, I love Jesus, over and over to get off the original thought. I need to add that I'm not a religious person. As soon as I would leave this house, I would be fine. Not one thought. But as soon as I pulled in my driveway, it would start up again, uncontrollable. I thought I was going crazy. I sat down with my wife and looked her dead in the eyes and said, I think I'm going crazy. I've been having weird thoughts. She turned white, and before I could say any more, she said, That you want to be possessed? I come to find out that for the past month, she had been having the exact same thoughts. Then, we started to compare stories. She told me that she was laying in bed without me. I worked seconds at the time, and she could hear a man whispering through the baby monitor while our child was fussing. Needless to say, we moved out within the month, ate the deposit. Her oldest daughter was still in school and we had moved across town. I had to pick her up at that house on my days off when she got dropped off by the bus. As soon as I turned the corner, I would get those thoughts. I would sit in my car in the driveway and not even go inside and wait. Number 6 I once worked on an Indian reservation and it's late night in the South Dakota. 
Some friends and I are driving. One of them is native, and we're discussing folk tales of the area. Suddenly, I see the white light running towards the road across the plains, and my friend steps on the brakes. You're doing that because you saw it too, right? Yup. We pull up to the area, and there is nothing there. I have goosebumps all the way back to where I'm staying. That night, I have awful dreams about native warriors trying to destroy New York City, and then I wake up with something breathing in my ear, whispering to me. I scream my friend's name, and he looks over to me and tells me it's okay. I fall back into the same dream over and over again. I keep trying to change the outcome. The next day, when my friend told me when he woke up and saw me screaming, a massive shadow was over me. A tall man. Not the slender man. This guy's different. My friend didn't want to tell me when he saw it since he knew it would freak me out even more. I was afraid to sleep for weeks, smudged the crap out of my room, put sage on the windowsill, and hung up mad dream catchers. Shit was scary, but also kind of funny. I think they had fun messing with the white girl. Number 7 It started when I got my Ouija board, and I never read the rules. My friends were too chicken shit, so I did it alone. I talked to two people that day by myself. One was a little boy named Tim, who was disowned by his parents and died in the forest. The other presence was much darker, and for two questions I asked, it would reply death, which was not a valid answer. I got angry with the second one and yelled at it to prove its malicious nature to me. Nothing happened. I packed the board away, feeling as if maybe it was me the whole time, which is the common notion for disbelievers. But then, the next two months happened. Between 3 and 4 a.m., I consistently woke up with terror sweats and felt as if I was being watched. About 50 days in, I awoke to the most horrid screaming and a thud so loud I thought someone was breaking in. I jumped up and felt again like someone was in front of me, wanting me to die, and yet, no sounds from upstairs housemates. I got so scared that I quit sleeping at night. I would stay up until 6 a.m. at least to make sure that ghost hour wouldn't affect me. But it came anyways. I'll always remember what happened at two months. I was playing Call of Duty as typical for the past two weeks, and all out of a sudden, I got this cold chill on my back. And it went to my left shoulder, and then also onto the left side of my head. And, I shit you not, I heard breathing in my ear. The pressure on my upper left side was if someone or something was leaning its head on my shoulder. I was frightened to death, but I decided, fuck this. I got up, swung my fists, and screamed, fuck off and go away. And after that night, it seemed to stay away. I don't know how all this happened, especially when I was such a non-believer. Those months felt like a dream. But I do believe now that certain energies do manifest around us, and it's best to stay away from the evil, hurtful ones. 